the moment we are Côte de Nuit, you see we drove out of Dijon, uh -huh. I took you southwards okay. and we are in the first wine village called marsanet la Côte. Oh, yeah, uh -huh. there. Now I will explain one first thing to you which is important to know, uh -huh. it's the term Côte. Do you have any idea what it means? Coast. A coast, coast. yeah. Could, could be coast if there was a sea. Um, but um, it's it's slope, yeah, it's slope hillside. Okay. So this is what you see a little bit in the clouds, mm -hmm. just behind the village. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> just remember for now that for geological reasons, but also meteor meteorolog whoops, meteorological reasons, uh -huh. um, um, this is the best place to have the vineyards, mm -hmm. okay. um, uh, the, uh, the 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 best qualities of Burgundy wines always grow somewhere on the Côte, okay? okay. Mm -hmm. And this is why Burgundy, which is, uh, now I, I will go back to this page, the Bur Burgundy region, it's pretty spread out, but it's always leaning on that Côte. Ah, and it goes okay. Down, right? Mm -hmm. um, so um, it's like hugging the mountain. It's like hugging, hugging the mountain. Hugging the mountains. Yeah. Yes, it's not really mountains, but yeah, um, slopes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so um, before we get into the Côte de Nuit, let me explain to you um, the whole wine region of Burgundy. So you see, this is uh, here on this page. You have the the let's say administrative mm -hmm. region of Burgundy and mm -hmm. here you can see the wine region and mm -hmm. the first part uh, the first part up here north west in the region mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. Chablis. Chablis so Chablis is not here but Chablis is up there okay, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so you know Chablis wines no. I, I've heard I've heard okay yeah. you've heard of them yeah so they are white yeah. right and they are made of Chardonnay Ah. Because in Burgundy, we basically uh, just work with two grapes, mm -hmm. Chardonnay mm -hmm. for white mm -hmm. and Pinot Noir for red. Mm -hmm. okay. No blendings. Mm -hmm. In many other wine regions, you have blended wines. In B Burgundy, you don't. Mm -hmm. It's just 100% Chardonnay for mm -hmm. white and 100% Pinot, Pinot Noir for red. Mm -hmm. um, so the first sub-region of Burgundy is Chablis up there towards Paris. Okay. Roughly um, roughly 70 miles northwest of Dijon. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, Chablis wines are, uh, are dry, mm -hmm. are crisp. We would also call them mineral, quite pure. Uh, they use very little oak on these wines for mm -hmm. the vinification. Um, so it's um, it's something yeah it's really uh, uh, as I said it's uh, uh, a mineral uh, a crisp wine which you will enjoy uh, either as aperitif uh -huh. wine uh -huh. um, but also of course with fish and seafood okay. and in particular with oysters uh -huh. I don't know if you have oysters in the Philippines yes you there do? are a lot of oysters there uh, next time you're ordering a shabby one <laughs> but we're vegans you can get it, okay? but, we're, but we're vegan so we don't eat seafood <laughs> not oh, anymore you don't eat seafood? No, oh no. yeah you're really nice. <laughs> I had it on my list yes yes of course sorry yes but I think you have a special lunch today right? Oh, yeah. yeah for vegetarians okay um, then the second part, and we just arrived in it after Chablis, is Côte de Nuit. This is okay. where we are, and at the very north of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay? Um, now, Côte de Nuit uh, is called Côte de Nuit because it's around the town of Nuit Saint-Georges. Mm -hmm. uh, we will be driving through, yes, today. We okay. will go through it. Uh, this part of Burgundy is mainly Pinot Noir. 90% ah, okay. of the wines produced here are red, only 10% white. And the most prestigious, the most elegant, um, the most famous wines we produce are right here in the center, in this red zone, because uh -huh. the red shows you that it's all Grand Cru. Oh, so Grand Cru. I, I will explain to you later on with the labels. You uh -huh. will very well understand our appellation okay. system. But just remember for now that right in the center of Côte de Nuit, you have um, special geological conditions. 
um, which uh, make it possible for the best wines wow. to grow there. Uh -huh. And we will be driving through. Grand Cru. Yes, yeah. it's really, we also call this part our Champs-Élysées. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Champs-Élysées of Burgundy, so... Um, that's where you buy expensive Elysée. wine also. Sorry? That's why, that's why you buy expensive wine in this area. Yes, the most expensive wines. So, of course, this is not what we are having daily with my husband. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah we are having more simple wines, but still. Uh, okay, so Côte de Nuit is really very important for, for Burgundy and all the Grand Cru in red are here, okay, okay. in the center. Now you go further down south and uh, after Côte de Nuit you have Côte de Beaune. Oh, yeah. So it's still leaning on that Côte. Mm -hmm. In Côte de Beaune you have once again both Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much 50-50. However, here it's the white wines which are standing out. Wow. So you have the one red, wine, yeah. red croissant north of Beaune. Mm -hmm. It's the famous hill of Corton, mm -hmm. where you have two Grand Cru, Corton in red. That's the only red Grand Cru they have in Côte de Beaune. Okay. Mm -hmm. Corton in red and Corton Charlemagne in white. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of Corton Charlemagne? No. no? no. Okay. You might... Um, Maybe you will try some today. Okay. Um, and then, um, then, 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 south of Bourne, three outstanding villages mm -hmm. for their white wines. Okay. So, Meursault Meurso. doesn't have any Grand Cru, mm -hmm. puligny Montraché and chassagne Montraché. Now, Puligny and Chassagne, you see a red spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They share the Grand Cru, the Montraché, which is amongst the most elegant, the most complex uh, white wines you can find in the world. Okay. People wow. who come to this region to really buy excellent white wines. Okay. So Côte de Nuit for red wines, Côte de Beaune, even though they have both, but you will go there for their excellent white right. wines. Okay. okay? It's Co for Côte de Nuit, Côte de Beaune. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> it's red, okay. more of you red, red yeah. you're white. white. Okay, <laughs> very good. This is how you will remember. <laughs> yeah. yes. But you are also Chablis. Yeah, yeah. Chablis. Yes, yes. you are also Chablis. Yes. Yes. Now, Côte Chalonnaise, you can share, both of you. <laughs> because we have Pinot Noir and Chardonnay again. Oh. It's around the town of Chalon sur saône mm -hmm. You don't see any red anymore. Yeah. No yeah. Grand Cru down there okay. anymore. Um, however, uh, nice Pinot Noir wines, nice Chardonnay wines, light, fruity, mm -hmm. good value for money. Sometimes we also call this cut our barbecue wines. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, the most southern part of Burgundy, the Maconnet. Okay. Now, Maconnet, you can see it's a little bit more spread out. Yeah. Yeah. They don't say La Côte Maconnaise. Uh, it's around the town of Macon. Once again, a big white wine Macon. region. Okay. Uh, like the Chablis, mostly white wines, but much more, not as mineral, not as dry. Let's say more fruity, sometimes floral, um, rounder, uh, great for aperitif wines, but also with food. Once again, fish um, or white meat, mm -hmm. uh, poultry, for instance. Good value for money. Yeah. So maybe you've heard of, I will give you two appellations like Puy Fissé, mm -hmm. uh, which is down here. Puy Fissé for white okay. wine or Viré Clécé. The white. These are two very famous white wines you can also find, I think, uh, abroad, uh -huh. all over the world. Okay. And then you find also around Macon another grape, not the Pinot Noir, oh. which is being used further down in the Beaujolais region. Okay. Do you have any idea of what it is? No. It's the Gamay. Ah. Gamay grape. Mm -hmm. So it's not Pinot Noir. So in Maconnet you will also find red wines, but made with Gamay. Okay. okay? Yeah. Um, so now you see, you see the whole region of Burgundy, like a long strip going from uh, north okay. to south. You can mm -hmm. see it always leaning on that court. It's a small wine region with only 30,000 hectares. Mm -hmm. Do you count in acres in the Philippines? Hectares. Hectares, hectares. hectares. So 30,000 hectares. If you compare it to the Bordeaux region, mm. Bordeaux is four times bigger. Wow. wow. So it's a small wine region. We only produce 3% of French wines mm -hmm. in volume 
and only 0.5% of the worldwide production. Wow. Peanuts. Wow, okay. yeah. Yes. Um, so far, so good. Uh, dispute between the domains? Yeah. yeah. For which reason dispute? Uh, because um, there are a lot of plots and... So, um, not, not normally, no disputes, however, um, at the harvesting time. Uh, when it's harvesting time, everything is being picked manually. Okay. And so, um, people have to go quick, mm -hmm. so they employ extra... Ah. Uh, extra... What do you call it? Like uh, hand. Huh? Extra hand to yes, help them. Yes, like but manpower. What, what yeah. I'm saying is that sometimes it's not necessarily the winemaker or the manager mm -hmm. who will go to the plots. They will have other people yeah. looking after that okay. and sometimes they get it wrong. Uh. So sometimes they start on the wrong road <laughs> yeah. and this can be uh, a source of dispute. dispute. Okay. Yes. But um, they won't kill each other. I mean, <laughs> they just they afterwards they give a call. They need small ownerships. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But this has existed for centuries and centuries now. So no, there is no disputes uh, yeah. as far as this is concerned. No. Okay. So I, I guess it, uh, the grapes have been harvested already. Right? Oh yes, yes, the grapes were harvested. Um, Roughly mid September, okay. around the 20th of September, which is quite late because the previous years with the very hot and dry summers we, we had, yeah. it was often end of August, beginning of September. Okay. So this year we were quite late, but we had all, also had um, over there. I'm still talking, so you can have another look. Um, I will take you um, after the tasting. I would. I hope that the clouds go up more and more, so we can really. Um, if you want to get out for photos, you tell me. It's, it's not a problem. It's okay. <laughs> okay. It's drizzling. Um, so this year was really uh, um, was a complicated year for us. Have you heard of it? No. The weather conditions were very bad, so we had late frost. Mm. Uh, late frost, end of April. Um, ah, okay. which which um, killed, killed most of the Chardonnay buds. At wow. that time only the buds had come out and Chardonnay came out earlier than Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. well, it's really private. <laughs> I can also take photos of the two of you if you would take At least it's very private. Oh, this is very yeah. private. No one will bother us here. <laughs> so that's very good. Nice. Wow. We're in a cave. Three hundred sixty. What's usually the life of a bottle of wine? How many years does it? Oh, that uh, there is not usually. That depends very much on the um, on the vintage mm -hmm. and on the quality of the wine. Okay. The higher you get up into the pyramid, the longer mm -hmm. you can age it. Yes. Okay. Our very own private wine tasting. <laughs> wine cave. Okay, let me do it.